5 seconds to go start mr deputy chairman so far as the principles underlying this bill are concerned i am in full agreement i also find that the provisions of this bill are an improvement upon the various provisions of the essential supplies powers act 1946 which this bill proposes to replace and i would like to congratulate the government for implementing the recommendations of the committee which you so ably presided over but i shall soon point out to you that very many important recommendations which your committee was good enough to make have not been implemented in the provisions of this bill i agree with the honorable minister that in a planned economy it is essential that the government should have such reserve powers as they seek under the provisions of this bill it is imperative that they should have powers to regulate the production supply and distribution at correct prices of the commodities which are most essential for the life of the community and i find that most of the governments of the different countries in the world today possesses such reserve powers in a small or a big measure in the united states of america which still believes largely in a laissez faire economy they have such powers in a very big measure therefore i do not grudge the grant of such powers to the government but as has been pointed out by my honorable friend the mover of this bill there is no immediate necessity of enforcing the provisions of this bill because we have passed through the era of plenty as has been pointed out by my honorable friend but we must take lessons from our experience in the past when the control measures were there and you have in your report very ably pointed out as to how these defects could be removed but i would like to view this measure from a little different angle we have got to view this measure from two different angles we have to keep in view the big towns the small towns and the big centers of production we have to control production and distribution by big undertakings and we have to maintain supplies in big towns and cities where the government machinery is functioning and we see so many officers there but we have also to keep in view that we have got to regulate production now the bulk of our population lives in the villages where we have got to maintain the supplies now these villagers are spread over big distances there is lack of communications in the countryside and we do not have the officials who administer these controls there they are to be found only in the district or subdivisional headquarters or mostly in some circle headquarters in the villages but the vast rural areas which constitute the village population do not have any officer of the government to enforce these measures and there in those areas we have a large number of small tradesmen who come under the compass of this bill the question is how to enforce these controls in those areas in the villages and in the rural areas and i see that unless we get the active and willing cooperation of the people in the countryside it is impossible to administer the control through the agency of the government servants the people were indifferent to controls and the question that now arises is this how can we enlist their cooperation and sympathy the village people must feel that they are getting a fair deal 
under the control measures and unless they feel that they are being justly treated they cannot give their cooperation to you there was a big disparity between the prices of the controlled commodities which were products of agriculture and the products of industry the villagers felt that their products the agricultural products which they produced were being snatched away from them at very unfair prices and they had to purchase industrial products at very much higher prices so unless the government sees to it that a proper parity is maintained between the products of agriculture and the products of industry you cannot have the full cooperation of the people in enforcing the control measures the people must feel that they are being fairly dealt with then the other point that i would like to emphasize is that people must have a hand in administering the control itself what happened during the last control days the control measures were being enforced by supply inspectors at the lowest level they used to live in the district of sub divisional headquarters and there was nobody to enforce the controls in the villages then the corruption started at the village end the small tradesmen and all the people who dealt in the commodities at the village level were in league with these officials and they victimized the people the people were helpless victims and helpless witnesses to all those things that had been happening for centuries in the villages stop